What up everybody? Today we're doing something very exciting. We're gonna learn about Figma plugins and by the time we are done you will be able to create a basic Figma plugin and you will have a basic understanding how Figma plugins work. So let's immediately start. Um, let's see, let's start with creating a plugin. That's easy. So you open your Figma, navigate plugins, press plus. Let's name it somehow. Uh, select third option, save as, and then save it somewhere. If you never used Node, uh, there is the link. And after that, you need to run this command to uh, install TypeScript. But I assume whoever is watching this already has Node. If not, maybe you won't understand this tutorial. It's not like really related to Node or anything, but if you never interacted with Node, it means you probably didn't make any website, modern website. Anyway, moving on. And then you have your um, folder with your um, files. I already have my demo project over here, which is open in VS Code. I strongly recommend to uh, going along with VS Code, but of course you can use whatever you like, whatever code editor is uh, your best code editor. Um, and once you open it, you will see some files. So uh, I will now explain you uh, two most important files uh, by going to Figma documentation. And here they have a very cool diagram. On left side, it says our sandbox, your JS code, uh, has access to scene, you can read layers, set selection, set viewport, okay, blah, blah. So basically, this is your sandbox file, code TS. Uh, you can access Figma API from this file. So anything that starts with figma.something is accessible through this file. However, when you want to get your user input, uh, do something with network, like fetch some data, uh, manipulate DOM, um, then you need to go to UI HTML. This is your uh, plugin window, and you can do all sorts of things over here. And in the end, you will want to send some data back and forth, uh, code and uh, UI. This is plugin. And there is a neat function called post message, and that will help you transfer uh, transfer data between those two. And let's start by opening code TS. And uh, if you go to Figma, and then you will see developer tools, click here. I, I have uh, already opened my window, so you will see something like this. Uh, and first we need to show our plugin window. So Right now, oh yeah, one important thing, we need to watch and compile our files. So shift, command B, and choose watch uh, from drop down. That's important. Now our code is compiling and we can actually test it out in Figma. And if I select my text um, element, and if I go to plugins, uh, mine is demo nothing nothing happens because uh, we, we don't have we, do, we don't have uh, proper code we don't have a show UI which is basically figma API uh, to fire up this UI file uh, let's see if something changes if we run it right now yes we have our empty window that's amazing so Without this function, you will get some errors and just use it like this and you will open UI. That's your plugin and you can ask, like do whatever you want there when it comes to interface and everything else, of course, uh, by using plain, simple HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, and before moving further, I will just quickly show you how this thing will look in the end. So it's very simple window with one uh, sentence that counts characters. One, two, three, four, five, that's amazing. And then we can close it also uh, by clicking a button. So how do we 
get this text. I want to get this selection. How do I get it? We will use uh, Figma API again. By writing this Figma current page selection, we are accessing whatever is on current page selected. I mean, their API is really expressive. Um, I don't think anybody should have problems understanding what's happening, even without reading documentation. And uh, this thing will return an array, but I don't want to iterate through an array or do something um, in bulk, right? So I'm just accessing whatever is first in array on index zero, and that's it. And I'm gonna show you how this looks in console. So let's see what's on index zero in our selected array. So we have this thing selected, plugins, development, demo, Okay, I need to run it again. Okay, so we see text node over here. That's amazing because we actually uh, selected text node. And here you see plenty of properties. Basically, whatever you see on this right hand side, um, it's, it's available over here. Uh, but we are interested in uh, characters and they will contain raw string whatever we have written here. So you just append characters and you get your raw string. If I run my plugin again, indeed there is hello. And now we want to post that data to the uh, plugin UI window. It's not just available there. So I pasted this little snippet post message. We mentioned it uh, briefly. We just specify an object. Uh, you can put here whatever you want. It's up to you. It depends what you need to send. Uh, in this case, I just want to send this raw string. So I'm making an object with key selection and value whatever is captured here. So we saw that we captured hello. And then we need to go to our UI file and uh, we need to somehow uh, fetch it, right? And function for that would be this one. You can make a snippet or just remember it. It's, it's in this form. Uh, whatever is posted from code, it will, uh, it will be here. Uh, and I'm going to comment this just for a few seconds so I can show you what we're doing here. I'm going to show you how this looks. By using event data plugin message, you will get access to whatever we sent here. Let's run it again. And yes, we have a selection, hello. And this is what we want. And dot length is pretty basic. You should know that by now. It just returns the count of characters. Um, you, I can show you. just to be on the same page. Let, let's run it again. What have I done? Ah, selection, sorry. And we get five. That's amazing. So we need to inject this number to our DOM so we could form a sentence that say that says uh, what I showed you in the beginning, that we have five characters. So I'm going to uncomment this, but we are missing um, some HTML. So I'm going to paste my snippet over here. This is very simple, three spans, and one of them has ID of count, which is fetched over here. And then inner HTML means just put here in between uh, something. So this space in between uh, will get signed with whatever is returned here. And we know we have five. Uh, so if we run this plugin again, we have selected text is five characters long, which is exactly what we wanted. And plugin is pretty much done. And you know how to 
uh, use Figma API and how to post a message to your plugin window. But I'm going to teach you now how to um, post something from UI to code. I'm going to add another uh, HTML element, this time button with the ID of close. And we now have to do the opposite. So we are fetching the element, this button close with this code. And then we have function on click. Uh, we lose something and that something is specified here. When you return um, some data back to a plugin, you need to have an object uh, that has a plugin message over here as a key and then another object with whatever um, you want to send back in any form. So this is the thing you manipulate. Uh, and why do we have type close? Where it's it's recommended in documentation um, that you specify a type every time you um, shoot an event back to your plugin file. So if you go back, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste just a sec a piece of code that actually sees all events uh, posted from UI. So this this function over here. And um, you will use a lot of ifs, uh, or if, else if, or whatever, uh, to actually detect what kind of, uh, what like which element is interacted with, and then according to that, what action you wanna trigger. So if we would have many buttons, every button would have uh, different type or name you can you can call this whatever you want and to in order to differentiate them I'm using event.type uh, which is exactly this this key and then I'm checking if it matches with close and of course it will match and Figma will close plugin this is a one liner that closes plugin so let's let's test it out and it works the last thing I want to show you, you want to style your um, plugin, yes. Uh, so just add style tags and then just to show you it works, I'm going to change, whoops, I'm going to change the color of uh, letters to red. So now when we run, you see this is red. So here you can create classes and do some crazy styling, um, nice styling, so it's not so ugly and plain. Make it, make it, um, make it nice so it looks it's part of a Figma, like it's the same theme. And uh, I think we can call it a wrap. This was very fast, but basic. Uh, I think you will be able to continue on your own. Please go to Figma documentation and read the um, whole thing by yourself. It will make everything super clear. Uh, there is already a community forming. There is a Slack channel which you can join. I will link it in the description. And there developers help each other with API and with, well, hard questions. If you like this tutorial, please uh, give me thumbs up, uh, subscribe and share with your friends. And until next time, bye bye.